this guy bootstrapped a rapidly growing SaaS startup and exited for $15 million. We're going to interview him and dissect his success. I myself built Vivino, a very successful startup, from zero downloads to $65 million. By no means easy. But there are a few key points that rapidly growing startups share. And by the end of this video, you're going to know what they are. Point number one, over deliver to a small audience. So the first step of achieving startup success is to find a small audience and over deliver to them. You can't compete with Microsoft or Salesforce on the number of features, but you can compete on having the right features for a small audience. Let's see how Bo was able to execute on that. We had a very specific focus. So it was pretty easy to build something that was valuable to that specific segment of customers pretty fast. Have a product that's not overloaded with all kinds of features, but rather has the right features that are spot on for this small audience. This makes the product a lot more relevant for that small audience. My friend knew, knew someone who was a psychotherapist and uh, he, he just spoke with that person. It was pretty random, I think. Uh, him and I discussed various niche areas we could focus on, but he, he knew this uh, psychotherapist and he started talking with her. And she told him that no one has really made a system specifically for psychotherapists. Where this sounds a bit niche, I will say that. It's very niche. <laughs> the system was actually called psychotherapistbooking.dk to begin with. We were pretty fast at moving away from that and <laughs> broadening it slightly. <laughs> Wonder why. <Yeah. laughs> Bo starts with a small group of therapists, specifically psychotherapists. He even limits the geography to a small place before going big. When we went international, we, we thought it was a terrible name because therapist is also the rapist. So, <laughs> yeah, we decided, to, we decided to completely change the name to Easy Practice because it's practice management and it, it actually broadened the segment customers even more. Start with this, then you expand the audience until you have a large audience. You win a market, market by market, and before you know it, you have a big business. So make sure you define a small market before you get to number two, which is just as important. Point number two, no compromise self-service. If you want to build something that's bootstrapped and truly scalable, it has to be self-service. I mean no compromise self-service. Basically about having the best self-service sign-up as possible. It's really important the customers can actually sign up with their payment details. And it shouldn't be bank transfers. It needs to be something where they can pay automatically, immediately, so that you have fully confirmed we actually have a sale. And I think that's really important. I meet quite a lot of SaaS founders who for a really long time, they don't really get this self-service on their website. And then it just becomes really difficult to actually figure out if you can ever sell this way. That's how we did it. So we focused a lot on people being able to sign up themselves and pay themselves immediately. This means standard product, no customization, no phones, no salespeople and no sales meetings, strictly online support. We didn't want to really talk with customers, and I know this sounds crazy, but we decided to not have a phone in the company so no one could call us. We also decided we didn't want to take any meetings because not having a phone meant we were never really interrupted by anyone. So we could just code the system, make it really, really nice. And uh, we always said no to customers reaching out saying, could we have a meeting? Do you want to speak with us on the phone? No, thank you. Yeah, we just said no to all of it. And our competitors thought we were crazy. And most people we spoke with, friends and whatnot in business, they also thought we were pretty crazy back then. But fast forward a few months or a year, so when we actually started getting customers through online marketing, we could scale much faster than our competition. Yeah. This is like aggressive self-service. Yeah, exactly. This means you have a totally different cost base. You can sell your product at a lower price and still make money. On top of that, you usually make more money for every product sold. How much do I have to pay for each customer? So you can start out by simply paying a thousand euro a month or a thousand dollars a month or even less. If that doesn't get a customer, then crank it up to two thousand or three thousand and eventually you will get a customer. And then you know, okay, that's our acquisition cost. Now we just need to lower this. And that's the way we went about it and it worked really well for us. The higher margin or the more money you make for every product sold becomes very important when we get to point number three in a few seconds. As you're not spending all this money on phone calls, traveling salespeople, and support to onboard clients, you can still remain bootstrapped as you won't have to hire all these people. It also makes your company simpler. Simple is good. It helps you move faster. It helps you innovate. Simple is always better. This sounds easy and simple, but it's not. You have to say no a lot, and saying no can be pretty hard. When a new partner sends you an email and says, hey, all you have to do is change the product a tiny bit, we'll give you $100,000, and you get 50 new clients. That's when you say no, no thank you. Insisted on not having those meetings, but eventually many of them ended signing up themselves anyway. But they had a hard time believing they could use a product that cost 20 or 30 or $40 a month actually, but, but they did. So when someone reached out to us telling us, hey guys, we have 20 clinics, we want to use your platform, we really need a meeting because we have 20 clinics, we could just reply back, look, we get 20 clinics automatically every single day. So <laughs> without doing anything, why should we have a meeting with you guys? You need to have a thousand clinics if we want to have a meeting. We told them we were thankful that they had reached out, 
but they would have to basically sign up themselves because we get more than 20 clinics each day that sign up by themselves. So it's simply too expensive for us to have these meetings. It wouldn't make any sense. That's what we said. Now you know you need self-service, but it all comes together in point number three. Point number three, find profitable growth. You now have a cost base for growth, profitable growth. What you're looking for now is slow and steady growth. Yeah, some of the things I feel like we did well is what we've been calling the, the turtle approach. <laughs> so we, my co-founder and I, we wanted to be just slow and steady. When we sold the company a few years ago, we were onboarding somewhere around a thousand clinics every month. Yeah. And I think our closest competitor, I may be getting this wrong, but I think they had a total of a thousand clinics or something like yeah. that when we sold the company. Don't try and force it. When you scale too fast, it gets expensive and you'll lose profitability. We always had product-led growth, meaning word of mouth. This can be hard to find and very few startups have that kind of word of mouth growth. You have to find some other profitable growth too. There's always a channel, but you have to find it. For some, it's paid TikTok. For others, paid LinkedIn or organic LinkedIn. You have to find out what that is. Every video on this, please check it out. The cool thing here is with the lower cost and self-service, you've set yourself up for profitable growth. It's much easier to find if you have lower cost and higher margin. It enables you to pay more for every client. Always go for linear and predictable growth. I think exponential growth is uh, very often uh, almost impossible. It, it, it's always been a mix between Facebook ads, Google ads, LinkedIn ads, TikTok ads, uh, Twitter ads, and uh, any other paid ad channel you can find uh, online. I think we got around, let's say, 20 uh, or 10 customers a month, uh, but uh, or, or clinics signing up. And when I left the company, we had a, around a thousand. Ignore the competition and just do your thing. And that's something I've really learned through the years that I don't want to take into consideration too much information about how the competitors do things. How did it feel when you sold the company $15 million and it actually happened? How did that feel? <laughs> and it felt a bit, uh, honestly, um, mixed feelings, I would say. I feel like I built a really great company. I really like that business uh, and it's also thriving today uh, without me uh, in it. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, but it also felt amazing to, to be able to sell a company for that much money. It's a, a life-changing sum, uh, certainly, of money. And I felt like I had, uh, I had completed entrepreneurship. <laughs> Now I don't have to do entrepreneurship anymore because uh, yeah, I can move on to the next thing, basically. Building a successful startup is by no means easy and it does require a certain amount of luck. Focusing on these three things made Bo successful in the long term, even bootstrap, and ended up selling it all for $15 million. Now stop watching, go build something.